Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand for its and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a very warm welcome to you. And if you're returning an equally warm welcome to you. And please don't forget to like, subscribe and share with your fellow uh, trading colleagues um, the quality content that I give. If you think it's quality content, of course, um, as it helps the YouTube algorithm and is a free way to support the channel. So. Uh, our trading 180 process is just to really apply fundamental analysis and technical analysis to really establish the best trading opportunities in the Forex uh, and gold uh, markets. So uh, moving on to the week ahead and um, uh, trading economics, let me just zoom in a little bit. It says, uh, so it will be a busy week in the US with labor report uh, taking the central stage, followed by ISM manufacturing and services PMI. Also, investors will be closely watching first quarter GDP growth releases from Switzerland, Canada, Australia, right? Those are the three that we're looking at, or the three currencies, countries, currencies we're looking at, um, and inflation rates for, for several European countries, including Germany and France. Those are the two big uh, European countries, especially Germany. Also speeches by several Fed officials and Bank of Canada interest rate uh, decisions. That's going to be a, a potential market mover. Um, uh, should provide some update on monetary policy settings and fundamentals. Analysis is all is all about you know monetary policy and currency exchange rate value, right? Um, you know, uh, and divergences and convergences. And we'll get into that you know a little bit uh, later in this video. And then there is the, uh, I guess, a, a more of a deep dive into the um, uh, the week ahead. If you want to go through it, uh, just go to Trading Economics, click on tradingeconomics.com, and uh, it should be in the week ahead tab right here. They used to put it um, actually on the uh, on the top bit, but for some reason uh, they don't do it anymore. Uh, but the week ahead, and you can kind of read through what is pretty much coming up. <clears throat> Uh, uh, in the week ahead, so let's uh, get into the uh, the charts and some uh, some deeper fundamental analysis um, on the specific pairs and looking at the DXY, the dollar index, and the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against um, uh, various currencies like the euro, the yen, the pound, and uh, over the past uh, couple of weeks we have really just pulled back. I think. Um, I don't think it's anything to really kind of worry about. The, the the dollar really technically was due for a pullback anyway. There wasn't, you know, obviously there were, you know, supply and demand zones, demand zones. I'm generally long on the dollar, although I recognize it, it's important to recognize when an area really is expensive, right? Because if you consider where, you know, just taking the, the, the year to date uh, price, um, what's happened if this is was an absolute bargain for the dollar and this is considered now an expensive area and you consider that the um, you're, you're really buying at you know overall highs right so if that's the bargain area that is the expensive area and I've got a Fibonacci tool in here but you can use Fibonacci is just really a way of to measure uh, certain types of uh, discounts 50% um, of that is what was known as fair value, right? So you got expensive, and we know that's proven to be expensive because prices didn't go higher than that, right? Buyers weren't willing to pay any more or value the dollar at any any higher than you know 105s. And we know that you know at the beginning of the year it was an absolute bargain down here, right? It's just proven facts. It's not you know open for debate. Now, if we're looking at if that's you know considered the bargain at the beginning of the year, and this is considered an expensive area. 50% is considered fair value, right? So at this point, a few weeks ago, um, the, the the dollar was, uh, the dollar now is proven to be expensive, right? So you're looking for pullbacks. Now, none of us know which area the, the, the market is going to decide that um, is going to be, the dollar is going to be a bargain again, right? So, the, the but the lower it comes is the more of a, uh, bargain it becomes right more towards the fair value area or what the market will establish is potential fair value as far as technical analysis is concerned what we do is we look for areas 
um, that are potential bargains. This was a bargain at some point because it made higher highs. Is this going to be a bargain again? Nobody knows, but if there is a potential trade setup, obviously not on the dollar index, don't really trade the dollar index, but that would this would apply to any of the dollar crosses or any you know currency crosses, then potentially you want to get involved in that. If fundamentally or risk sentiment wise, um, you know, things aren't necessarily looking great for the dollar, then you're gonna see this start to um, you know, potentially happen. But the point is is that we're always looking for potential bargains, right? That's that's the key. And if you're if you if you're buying at a bargain or this happens to be a bargain and prices come down and you know you've got lots of upside potential, then you've got you know maybe five, ten, fifteen, twenty to one type trades because you're buying more towards fair value. If you're buying at highs, you're more likely to get caught out um you know, uh, um, uh, where, where the market is like, well, in fact, we've made a lot of money from here to here. So it's time to now start to sell and, uh, you know, liquidate the buy positions, get traders to go long and uh, they can sell into that liquidity and then reload uh, deeper down. Right. Because that's really what fun. This is what uh, Fibonacci is about and fundamental analysis is about. But going into maybe the re some of the reasons why the dollar is um you know uh, coming off the boil a bit is uh, this was an interesting article in bloomberg where um uh, the, the 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 headline is here's how the fed might adopt bostic's rate pause in september yeah so there's clear and convincing evidence of slowing inflation is a must slow down in growth and jobs also conditions to halting rates so this is a great article um i might put it up on the uh, on the channel maybe a bit later on or tomorrow for you guys to um, to read <clears throat> or actually in fact uh, many of you have been you know um, watching some of the uh, fundamental analysis videos that I've posted recently so this might be I'll, I'll just basically play this and you can follow along but uh, the Federal Reserve Bank of uh, Atlanta president uh, Rafael Bostic uh, has uh, cracked open a door for discussing a September pause in the central bank's aggressive rate hikes, a move that will only uh, be on the table if inflation falls more than expected over the summer. Now, for those of you who you know might not necessarily understand um, in the relationship between inflation and uh, interest rates and uh, GDP, um, I do have um, a webinar that you can uh, that you can watch, um, and that really kind of breaks this down as to um, you know why uh, price generally moves in the medium to long term but um, what this is basically saying is that um, the, uh, the, the the Federal Reserve or there's a member of the Federal Reserve not a voting member a matter of fact is uh, the federal uh, president of the uh, Bank of um, Bank of Atlanta president is basically saying that the Federal Reserve should potentially or could potentially pause, uh, hiking rates right so in if we go back to price you had you know when when the fed were literally looking to hike rates which generally should appreciate a currency this is what you saw now that they're getting to a point where they don't necessarily have to hike rates as much you know come september towards the end of the year the dollar has to now be repriced yeah it has to be repriced because this was like you know peak um uh, interest rate hikes yeah or the valuation of potential interest rate hikes that's what you know pricing in means but now um you know the fundamentals have slightly changed so this is just um you know the, a pullback and uh, the market potentially pricing in uh less uh rate hikes so there's obviously you know profit taking going on um around around a dollar right so um uh, yeah, so so pretty much the dollar for me is still a buy, but it's just you know a pullback. I think um, you know going on with the uh, with the dollar and um, and there are signs of obviously slowing inflation, which is going to be good potentially for the economy because uh, high inflation, as we'll get onto the, the the pound in a little bit, is that there's a cost of living crisis going on in in the UK. Uh, and that is due to high inflation and all central banks have a mandate to try and get inflation to 2% whereas um, you know inflation at the moment in several countries is way above that so um, you know there is uh, um, uh, uh, a potential pause coming um, 
with the Federal Reserve Monetary Policy, which is pushing prices, you know, to the downside doesn't mean necessarily it's going to go down all the way. It just means that, you know, if you do want to be a buyer of a dollar, you can buy it for, you know, for, for cheaper, right? Because ultimately it's still the best, who is the best of the worst, right? So the dollar is still, you know, in a better position than, for example, you know, the, the Japanese yen, right? I'll give you that for sure. Um, so with that being said, let's uh, delete all of this and go into technically where areas are likely prices may want to you know reverse or become a potential bargain and uh, really the first area is for prices to come down to the 101s before turning around of course um, you want to use the dollar uh, index as just confluence with for example the dollar yen dollar swiss if you're looking to buy the dollar that is and if it starts to turn up on the uh, uh, there's some demand here at the 101s and you start to see demand on the, um, uh, on the, uh, for example, the dollar yen. If you're trading that pair with the dollar Swiss, um, then uh, that you can use that as confluence. Of course, prices may not even get down there, right? This might be considered the bargain right here. Of course, nobody knows. Just using this as confluence. But um, for me, the overall direction I still think for the dollar is to the upside. But the further it comes down is the, is the more of a bargain it becomes and towards fair value uh, prices so moving on to the uh, dollar index <clears throat> and the dollar index and oh, sorry dollar index the, uh, the the dollar yen apologies the dollar yen um, we've come down into this area of demand which has been you know used as an area of demand once uh, twice the more times the level is touched uh, the um, uh, the less of a bargain it becomes because it becomes a bit more obvious. Uh, managed to get involved in a, in a stop hunt trade just below this area here. Um, made a little bit on, on there. So uh, at least just about um, above profitable uh, trade now uh, um, on a lower time frame. Now just waiting for hopefully prices to start to turn up so we can, you know, make uh, some more money on, on, the, on the remaining positions on this. But um, with the yen, with the yen and all central banks, really, what they're doing is uh, uh, due to inflation uh, prices and pressures, what is happening is, is that the uh, uh, Bank of Japan, Karuda, says that US rate, uh, US rate hikes won't necessarily mean a weaker yen. And so the Bank of Japan um, governor, said that interest rate uh, increases by the Federal Reserve won't necessarily cause the yen to weaken, saying various factors affect the currency market. Um, and he goes into you know certain things why, right? So the Fed rate uh, uh, may affect the value of the US government bonds and uh, stock prices, uh, Karuda said in response to Parliament. So I think it's not necessarily the case that Japan's capital flow into US continuously causing the yen uh, to weaken and um, and so again central bankers understand the uh, the nuances uh, between um, you know rising inflation and um, rising um, uh, rate hikes right and um, again if you are you know a bit confused on this I have several videos right on, on on my YouTube channel that you can look towards which really kind of it breaks down and I'll put it in a, just the, the most simplest terms um, and understanding um, you know inflation and interest rates and this is the interest rates and inflation diagram relationship if you have rising inflation yeah then right if inflation goes from two to three to four to five central banks are generally pressured to raise and hike interest rates which is what you're seeing right if inflation starts to come down yeah from three to two to one then they are less likely to hike rates or they don't hike as much right and if they obviously I say obviously but if it's if it's below their central bank two percent target then they end up cutting rates so understanding this and understanding the nuances of um you know the currency strength between uh, two two currencies right and exchange rates is what is really important and if you know um, you're a forex uh, trader right then it's imperative that you understand this to make the best uh, decisions and so 
Central bankers talk about this all the time. So why, uh, as as a retail trader, wouldn't you want to understand this stuff, you know, to its um, you know full degree, so that you can make the best decisions? Because the central bankers are the ones that are moving the markets in the medium to long term. It's not you know Elliott Wave or any kind of technical analysis. Yes, technical analysis, you know, uh, people time and you know the market as far as you know uh, liquidity and stuff like that. But if you want to understand and capture you know the big trends or if you want to understand when a, a currency is more likely to range or auction um, as it's really should be known um, then you have to understand um, you know the, uh, the the relationship uh, inflation and interest rate relationship diagram and why you know central banks uh, uh, do what they do to have the effect of currencies that they should want to have right whether they're appreciating or devaluing their uh, currency and you can find all that out on the 6th of June, between the 6th and 10th of June, when enrollment opens, right? So I am opening my um, uh, mentoring program, not only supply and demand, but fundamental analysis um, and really in-depth fundamental analysis. And you get access to the fundamental analysis spreadsheet, which really determines um, our bias on certain uh, currency pairs strength divergences and certain things that we look at um, and also understanding the currency value cycle so not every single currency that is ranked one two or three is going to be for example a strong currency we need to determine whether there's um, a, a strong currency that is uh, uh, potentially going to devalue right due to monetary policy or economic um, uh, um, business cycle where they are in an economic business cycle and i help you with all of that right and this is the rules to the game this is not going anywhere this is the economic model this is what um, determines currency valuations um, over the medium to long term and even in the short term so um you know i, I literally produce videos on, on a daily or every other day and these are the private videos that members in the discord group get and um, I've uh, recorded for those of you who are watching uh, this as well apologies I haven't actually sent this out but I did record a um, an in-depth fundamental analysis video so just log into the, uh, the, the, the the trading videos channel in the discord group and you'll get the uh, the analysis the fundamental analysis plus We've got uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos um, all here uh, in the uh, the members area, plus the courses, plus um, uh, so much more. So if you do want to be a, um, a Trading 180 member, um, again, the enrollment opens on the 6th and closes on the 10th of June. And again, um, I'll probably be closed for a good few months after that. So if you've been waiting to join, um, now is your opportunity, or say now, but in the next uh, seven to eight days. So, um, guys, you will definitely, once going through that, you will understand exactly uh, how to read these articles and really determine um, where you know the trends are, the big trends, if there are any, what you know the best pairs to trade, etc. So, going back to really, you know, this chart here um, and, and the dollar yen, I do think for me. Again, um, you know, the dollar should be the stronger out of the two, but if prices don't necessarily uh, hold here and it could start to fall a bit further, um, you could even see prices actually go down to the one, two, twos, and then you have a lot more upside potential because I do think the dollar would be definitely a bargain down here. Or you could see prices come down and then actually could, could uh, create demand, right? Could create demand here and if it does create demand then it's just a pullback into that zone before getting long but my bias really uh, for the dollar at least in uh, for now is still to look to buy the dollar but I do recognize that this is on the higher side on the um, on the valuation valuation end if we're taking potentially the uh, the last major I guess swing from that low to that high I think we've come down to probably some sort of a fair value yeah so we're just touching fair value there so it was a decent area to look for you know some long trades and um, again I actually break down that trade um, in the uh, members group area uh, I think it was in the uh, in our group call which was on the when was it now yeah it was our group call here which is the 25th of May um, you can see group call 
talk about less fundamental divergences, profit target expectations using fundamental euro buy, pound to sell and more. So I can break it down there. Um, and also as well, there is a members uh, technical analysis where I go into weekly analysis, where I go into the strategy as well. And I think I broke it down there, that trade, that stop hunt trade. Anyways, um, getting back to the, um, the dollar yen and uh, really those are the options if you are looking to short the, uh, the, the the dollar and buy the yen, then really the, the closest area I would say is going to be the one two nines uh, would be the, the best area to look for any kind of uh, short trades to buy the, the yen, maybe based off of some sort of risk off sentiment. The dollar uh, dollar Swiss dollar Swiss is an interesting one. Um, the Swiss franc um, and the Swiss National Bank are actually now looking to uh, potentially hike rates. Um, in December so um, with that being said the um, Swiss uh, the Swiss the Swiss franc has appreciated right against the dollar this was caused this price action was when the Swiss National Bank were not looking to hike rates and the, uh, the the Federal Reserve were hiking rates right so you had a divergence between the two currencies and between the two central bank policies you had the Fed hiking rates and the um, the Swiss National Bank SNB were not looking to hike rates, right? Now they've come out and they've pretty much indicated that they might start to hike rates, right? So now the valuation of the um, uh, the, uh, the, the the dollar Swiss uh, can't be up here because uh, the Swiss National Bank is now looking to strengthen their currency. So you're seeing now a pullback like this. And I do think, though, that the Fed is still ahead of the Swiss National Bank, and I do believe that this would be a decent zone to look for long trades. I'm still looking for long trades on this. So if prices do pull back into that 95 area to 94, I do think that's a decent area to look for any kind of long trades, or that's what I'm looking for. Again, it's not financial advice. Um, but if you do want to be a buyer of the Swiss franc, uh, looking for probably pullbacks, I would probably say this area, the 97 area, would be decent for a potential short if you believe that the Swiss National Bank and the Swiss franc should appreciate even more against the uh, uh, the US dollar. Dollar CAD, um, dollar CAD is strengthening again because of the uh, dollar uh, pullback, and uh, again we do have the the Canadian dollar and the Bank of Canada um, uh, hiking rates this week again. I, nothing's for certain but it looks like they you know chances are pretty much that they will and uh, you can start to see that that's having again an effect on the uh, the, the dollar uh, CAD so that the Canadian dollar is strengthening if you want to get long on this currency pair uh, against going go against really the the Canadian dollar and the central banks hiking rates then I think that's a decent area but I don't you know personally like it in fact I don't think it's a decent area because it's ever has been kind of touched a couple of times I do like the hard in hard out movement but I would probably more prefer maybe a stop hunt below that or if you're looking at um, you know the, the tops of this one two six area to look for a potential um, uh, buy trade um, but uh, this is not a pair I'm really interested in, in any more in trading so uh, let's see what happens I'll draw that probably from around there um, I see what happens here. If you're looking to short and get short on this currency pair, then you've got a level of uh, a supply above there. And um, I know it's a wide zone, and people might think, well, wh where can I, you know, get involved in that? One of the ways is to really kind of break down the zones and look for support and resistance um, within those supply and demand areas, both on a daily and an intraday, right? So if we know that there's strong supply potentially here that's driven price to the downside. Um, look for areas of uh, support and resistance go down to maybe the four hour or the two hour or the one hour and you can start to see if there's any levels of uh, obvious support and resistance which I don't think there really is until you get to really like the highs um, so for me I really wouldn't want to get involved in that mess anyway yes from a daily perspective there is supply there because you can look to see that there was supply around here which drove prices down but overall, you want to kind of trade around, um, again, support and resistance zones within that area. I think there might be one right here. If you really want to get involved in that, that's probably where you would, first area where you'd want to probably look for 
uh, any kind of sell trades from an intraday perspective. So that one uh, two eight round number or just above it would be the area to look for potential short trades if you want to be a buyer of the Canadian dollar. But it's not a pair that I'm interested in uh, trading anymore. Made some money from up top here on a nice uh, uh, stop hunt and uh, took profit. Anyways, uh, moving on to the New Zealand dollar, US dollar. And this is again, not really a pair I'm interested in trading, but um, I can see definitely potential for a uh, sell. Technically, it looks uh, really nice. Come up to a really nice area. So potential um, for a short trade, you'd have to believe that the dollar is definitely a bargain against the New Zealand dollar. New Zealand dollar just hiked rates um, last week. So um, they are, you know, two central banks are hiking rates. This is a hard, much harder trade to try to predict where prices will go. The, the dollar does have a bit of an edge simply because it does act as a risk off currency. So in, in any kind of risk off environment, um, uh, the, 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 the dollar, the US dollar should, should be the one to uh, strengthen and commodity currencies generally you know, don't strengthen in a risk off environment or typically don't. Um, so if you do want to get involved in this trade uh, to the uh, uh, downside, I think technically it's nice, just don't like it fundamentally and it's not a pair that is on my list of uh, currencies to trade. Uh, pound dollar is though, so pound dollar, um, I'm involved in this trade right now and um, let's see how it goes. I've got in a couple of uh, times on here, uh, made a little bit on here, but hopefully prices should want to reverse around uh, here, if it doesn't, I think this 130 level is going to be an absolute uh, brilliant area, a very uh, cheap area for the for the pound dollar to get short on this. Um, and why would I be uh, short on the uh, the British pound? The British pound at the moment, um, uh, again, just like the US dollar, you have a situation where the pound uh, earlier in the week it had pound tumbles as rate hike bets cut on fresh recession fears. So Sterling tops volatility table this week as Haven, Gilts Rally and S&P Global Index of UK private sector growth slid in May. And the pound tumbled and investors rushed to safety of government bonds after the index of UK private sector growth was unexpectedly, uh, sorry, uh, UK private sector growth unexpectedly slid in May to weak reawakened fears of a recession. So that led traders uh, that led traders to rein in bets on further interest rate hikes from the Bank of England, given the risks that higher borrowing costs will halt growth. The pound nearly fell 1% against the dollar, reversing Monday's gains and making <clears throat> the most volatile group of 10 currency this week. So <clears throat> ultimately, um, you know, the, the, the UK isn't doing too well. Yes, we've got the Queen's Jubilee coming, uh, lots of retail uh, and spending and consumer spending, but I don't think it's going to be enough to potentially avert a downturn in the economy. And that doesn't mean necessarily a recession, but um, obviously the um, uh, the smart money is, is, is thinking that the um, the Bank of England rate hike, uh, rate hikes, um, or the amount of rate hikes that they do, is, or, or they were talking about, basically have been cut or taken off the table, because to, to try and hike in a recession would just compound um, the recession because again of rising borrowing costs, rising lending and borrowing costs, right? So higher borrowing costs, right, will halt growth. So, um, or or may halt growth. So. Again, if that is a fear um, of the market, I do believe that prices should want to come down at some point. Again, do I know exactly where? Does anyone know exactly where? No, no one knows exactly where prices will turn. Um, this is the reason why we manage risk. And if you, if, if, if I did know exactly where prices were going to turn, or if anyone knew where prices were exactly going exactly going to turn, then um, you know the, the best thing to do for them would be to put everything they own on that one trade, right? Because it's like betting on the sun coming up in the morning. Um, if you're that sure, so. Um, but again, nobody really knows. So you just manage your risk, and. Um, and uh, see what happens. Will prices turn around here? Hopefully, if it does, then there's a lot of risk reward to the downside that I have, right? So if you know I'm right about this trade, um, or, or the fundamentals at least, 
and uh, so one two six all the way down to um, what's that potentially we could have down to one two one so that's maybe about 500 pips to the downside potentially so that's worth you know the risk reward right I think my, my stop loss is somewhere about 40 pips above here something like that so you know risking about maybe 70 80 pips depending um, uh, for a good maybe three four hundred pips that's good risk reward for me uh, again not telling you to get involved in this trade you don't know how I've entered um, and the reasons you know as far as the technical reasons why I've entered but just understand that uh, for me I do think that the British pound is a sell at some point will this be profitable yes no who knows if it's not it is what it is you move on to the next one um, if it is then brilliant but if you are buying the pound right there is in fact a, uh, a demand zone here if you feel like you want to buy the pound um, and that's where it is so you've got higher highs higher lows being made and then a potential um, you know pullback into this zone could push prices you know a bit higher yeah and if it does again all it all this means is that we're taking a uh, you know, price from this area to here then we are at fair value and anything above fair value for me is probably seen as a as a potential bargain so if prices do come up to that 130 area i think that downside is going to be very very nice but let's see what happens on this uh, trade come next week um and then we've got actually in fact uh yeah i'll leave it at that uh moving on to the euro dollar and the euro is looking like strengthening right so um there was a last week there was a supply zone here this obviously wasn't seen as a bargain for the dollar to go short and we've had prices move you know a lot higher and there was uh, and there is i guess a lot of uh, fundamental analysis surrounding um, the uh, the euro and the fact that the uh, European Central Bank Christine Lagarde uh, prepares for ECB liftoff with yet more record inflation so again because inflation is is going high it going higher and rising it forces yeah remember this remember this diagram it forces central bankers to do what the higher inflation goes right is the more you have to hike interest rates so whatever this number is I think it was like maybe 7.5 percent or something like that inflation yeah it moves towards the interest rate hiking area right so that's two percent if that was two percent it'd be three percent four percent five percent that's how they have to hike their high rates right so um, Europe is still uh, for me anyway um, not necessarily the greatest buy um, against other currencies but um, the market has to revalue what the exchange rate of the euro will be if they do high rates. Hence, the reason why you're seeing, um, if you go back to uh, the, the euro dollar, why you're seeing, um, you know, the, the market move a bit higher. And, it's, and together with the, you know, the, the pound, I guess the dollar, sorry, uh, not being as uh, 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 strong, or there's uh, rumours that they may potential potentially stop hiking around the uh, towards the end of the year you're seeing you know maybe a move up to the 108s 109s and even maybe the potentially the 110s and 111s um, around here but when you zoom out it's probably to be expected because if you're looking at you know what's happened over the past um, you know year or so look how look at this look at this move you know what I mean it's just been literally you know one way so in the perspective of it is that you know you was due some sort of pullback at some point um, and also as well there's reasons why this is pulling back this you know was happening when again the Fed were hiking rates or looking to hike rates and Europe were not only uh, not hiking rates but the war in Ukraine was going on um, and there was uh, problems with the economy regardless so now those things have been probably priced in especially the war in ukraine doesn't seem to be a, a factor uh, that or that much of a factor anymore um i think the uh, change really is just 
uh, that Europe are now looking to appreciate their currency. So um, any investors that are buying uh, the euro or holding the euro now, rather than going from you know uh, negative rates or zero rates, they're going to try and get maybe a return for holding uh, the euro. So that has to be you know uh, priced in, right? This 109, 108, and the 107 price exchange rates are not there just to um, you know just for, for for the sake of it being there. You know it has to be there because that's what the value is or potential the price is and. Uh, and potentially the value so um, euro is it a buy um, for me potentially I'm not buying it against the dollar um, it's a harder trade to take at the moment I do think the dollar is um, still the buy uh, of this but I do think that um, uh, prices in the short term for the euro especially in the lead up to uh, a potential rate hike you know, the euro should want to price in that hike and it may be a bit higher around its 108 to 109 areas uh, and looking for that. There is, uh, I think, a technical area, um, a bit of confluence in that in that area there, the 108s. Um, and then you also have a decent area, I think, it's probably somewhere around here. So, um, yeah, between that 108 and 109, I think, is decent for a short. If you're looking for a long trade, I think any pullbacks into maybe the 105s might be good as well if you're looking to buy the euro. Um, dollar, oh sorry, Aussie dollar and uh, Aussie dollar again. I think most currencies this week and for the past couple of weeks, you know, have been, have been really kind of pulling back. And again, we've seen that on the, uh, on the dollar index. So, looking at where demand is i've got quite a lot of demand lots and lots of demand i'm gonna just draw this as one zone because you've got several zones in here um and you've got i think i'll just draw it right there um so again fundamentally do you want to be a buyer with the australian dollar um, against the US dollar. I'm a buyer of the Australian dollar, but not particularly against the uh, US dollar. Um, but if you were, then you're looking at, you know, pullbacks into um, that area there. I think probably the uh, this zone here looks decent for the, the 70, 50 area. Somewhere around there might be decent for a potential buy. Um, if you're looking to buy the Australian dollar, if you're looking to sell, then I think anywhere right now up into that two, uh, 0 0.725 area would be decent for a potential uh, short trade to buy the uh, US dollar. And the US dollar should want to strengthen in a risk off environment. Um, but again, you'd probably want more, maybe a bit more confluence of the dollar index looking to um, strengthen before looking to get uh, short on this currency pair. But for me, it's not really a pair that I'm interested in. Uh, Aussie uh, yen, uh, this pair I have been interested in and um, looking for prices to really kind of pull back before getting uh, long, maybe into that 88 area before looking at getting long. Yes, we are in a risk off environment, but the Australian dollar did, I think they hiked rates uh, recently. So pull back into, you know, that 88 area, I think is going to be very nice for a potential buy. Um, I think there's a flaw now in that in that price. Um, if you're looking to buy the Japanese yen, then again a pullback into the 93s. The yen may strengthen if you know the Bank of Japan do come out and start to get a bit more hawkish on the um, on the Japanese yen. Uh, so you could see uh, that, and if that is the case, then maybe this may not hold as much. But this, I think the 85 area is definitely going to be one for that. But either way, I think the Australian dollar is a buy against the uh, Japanese yen. And finally, gold. And gold, again, has been a very, uh, very tricky to trade. There was, you know, prices did come down into the uh, 118 areas. Um, talking about this a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, and prices have gone up from there. So any pullbacks, I think there was definitely a flaw there, um, especially if inflation starts to... Uh, um, still go higher. Um, I think there is definitely a, a potential uh, buy within this zone. If you are looking to, you know, sell the sell gold um, and still buy the dollar, then 
literally just looking for that pull back up to that 1880s level and then look for a potential uh, sell trade again gold very tricky to trade at the moment it really typically wasn't reacting um, to, uh, to, to to fundamentals um, whether it's being suppressed manipulated um, who knows but um, when you think about how high inflation is and gold hasn't um, really you know gone through the roof it's uh, you know a big question mark there um, so uh, let's see what happens with gold but uh, guys um, that's it for this week again um, thank you for watching and making it this far uh, don't forget to check out the website and I look forward to working with you if I haven't got back to your messages by the way I definitely will just been a bit busy and I will get back to each and every one of you thank you for watching and uh, I'll speak to you soon have a great week